Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Edgar Degas. These names are most commonly associated with Impressionism, one of the most influential and important modern art movements. However, as you may expect, these three artists are far from being the only Impressionists. Some, I would argue, were at times even more controversial and convention-defying than this trio. The artist I'll cover in this video is definitely one of them. The one thing I like the most about their art is that sometimes they'd leave large parts of the canvas completely devoid of paint, something I absolutely love for reasons I'll get into later. They were already successful, even before being linked with the Impressionists, appearing at seven Paris salons and later seven of the eight Impressionist exhibitions. They'd study under Edouard Manet, pretty controversial himself, who they met in 1868. That same year, Manet would paint them, alongside two other models, in this painting, The Balcony. However, if you assumed, looking at the balcony, that the artist I'm talking about is the man in the center, you'd be wrong. This video is on the only woman amongst the 29 artists of the first Impressionist exhibition. We're talking about Berthe Morisot. Manet would often use Morisot as a model for his paintings, and it was often speculated that both artists had an affair. However, Manet was married, so Morisot married Edouard's brother, Eugène Manet. You can see him here in Eugène Manet on the Isle of Wit, made in 1875, looking outside of a window. The couple would have a single child, Julie, who'd later become Morisot's favorite model. You sometimes see her with her nurse, sometimes with her father, sometimes daydreaming or captivated by a book. She can be seen playing the violin or mourning her dead father. These scenes follow Julie throughout her life. They depict the serene, the happy, and sometimes the sad. What attracts me the most to these paintings isn't necessarily the subject matter. A girl reading, for example, but it's the idea that Morisot recorded these moments because her daughter was living them. Perhaps she didn't really care to paint a girl reading, but she really wanted to paint her daughter reading, and this relationship between the artist and the subject is incredibly powerful in these paintings, and they can't be overlooked. My favorite artwork, by far, featuring Julie, isn't even a painting, it's this drawing. It's titled The Drawing Lesson. It shows both Berthe and Julie, heads almost touching, working on a drawing. Morisot is looking at the viewer, or the mirror, while Julie seems captivated by the drawing. The admiration she has for her mother's work is touching. We can almost imagine her about to raise her eyes towards us to compare her mother's drawing to their reflection. However, what I like the most about this artwork, aside from the heartwarming mother-daughter relationship it depicts, is the fact that we, as viewers, are playing Julie's role. We are examining the drawing the same way she is. We are seeing what she is seeing. It's almost as if, if we turned to our right, Morisot would be drawing next to us. The emotional connection between the two subjects and the fact that the viewing experience of this artwork is similar to the experience of these subjects makes the artwork immersive. It's a drawing, there's no color, there's no detail, but you still feel pulled into the work if only for the simple fact that the obscure drawing this little girl is looking at is being looked at by you over a century later. However, Morisot's art wasn't only exceptional because of the emotional connection she had with her subjects or because of various feminine characteristics many critics would associate to her art, but also because of some pretty radical techniques she applied to her works or didn't apply to her works. See, sometimes she didn't bother to cover parts of the canvas. She left canvas exposed, completely assuming the fact that the image she was making was a fabrication. If academic painters camouflaged their brushstrokes to hide the trace of the artist, Morisot was proudly showing that there is, in fact, an artist behind this work, and the contrast between the empty canvas and the subject most effectively shows this. There are many examples of this, many of which are my favorite works by Morisot. 
Young Girl with a Vase, made in 1889, was exhibited as a finished artwork. This is not an unfinished painting. What I love about this type of work is the contrast between the detailed and the sketched, between the full and the empty, between presence and absence. And this contrast forces the viewer to focus on the subject. Our eye can't wander around the composition, and if it does, it's only for a brief second. There isn't much to look at. Every single painting using this technique creates a kind of blurriness around the subject, giving us no other choice than to concentrate our full attention to it. Manet would write in a letter to Fontaine Latour that it was regrettable that Morisot wasn't a man. Berthe Morisot has definitely lacked the recognition she deserved, and it's undoubtedly because she's a woman. We know Monet, Manet, Renoir, Degas, and I'm certain that, one day, Morisot will be among those names. There's a growing effort to correct the oversights of the past, and re-establishing Berthe Morisot as one of the pioneers of Impressionism is part of these efforts. I'm going to end this video on a quote by Morisot. I don't think there has ever been a man who treated a woman as an equal, and that's all I would have asked for, for I know I'm worth as much as they. Thank you so much for watching, thank you for liking and subscribing if you have already, and I'd like to thank, as always, you Design Our Right, Kohler, and every other patron for supporting the channel. If you also want to support the channel, check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas.